Well, hi there, friends. Pete Morano, Old Man Muscle, coming back to you with another video chat. So I hope you're in the mood for it. And I'm going to follow up an on an idea that I presented previously, and that is the importance of keeping our bodies in motion, at least part of the time. And of course, that's where the Old Man Muscle workout comes in handy. And I hope you've been reading the book, or if you don't have a copy, that you can pick one up sometime soon. Because in it, I detail a series of 10 exercises as the old man muscle workout. One of those exercises is going to be the focus of today's discussion. And the muscle group that is being worked in that exercise is the triceps brachii. So a lot of folks may wonder, what exactly is he talking about? So I hope you'll stick with me. I also want to not only challenge us physically, so to speak, with the notion of working out, but it's also important that we get challenged mentally. And so we're gonna have um, new terms to learn. For instance, what is the sagittal plane? What is flexion and extension all about? And so on and so forth. So. Uh, if you're up for some stimulation that's mental as well as physical, you want to stick with me over the course of the next several minutes. And I look forward to sharing this information with you, of course. Well, greetings from inside the Old Man Muscle Fitness Studio or Strength Training Studio. And you know, as a personal trainer, I am skilled at conducting what is called a functional movement assessment with my client. And what this is, is a systematic series of observations based on client's ability to perform several directed movements so that I can check for possible deviations from normal or compensations to the movement um, due to musculoskeletal imbalances or perhaps some uh, joint issues which can be rather compromising to say the least. And these can put a person at risk for injury, so it's very important to get this assessment down. And uh, functional movement assessments specifically are looking at mobility, flexibility, stability, and balance. Now once the functional movement assessment has been completed, I would have an idea of the functional status of the client and I would be able to suggest some corrective exercises and stretching perhaps uh, so that they can safely progress to an exercise program that will be effective and give them the proper uh, fitness that is their goal. And I appreciate that by using this kind of an approach, I can reduce the risk for future injury and progress clients safely and effectively through the old man muscle workout specifically. Now, if you are thinking of starting to work out with a personal trainer, and um, you know, the, uh, the month for New Year's resolutions isn't quite here yet, but it'll be coming. And oftentimes people start thinking about getting into shape and doing something that they put off year after year. I know that was uh, certainly the case with me. Um, the good news is that um, if you find a trainer that uses an approach like I'm outlining here regarding functional assessment at the outset, that uh, that is the way to go before the client ever touches a dumbbell or tries to perform an exercise. And this is very important to realize that. As the expression goes, we have to learn how to walk before we can run. Now for today's video chat, <coughs> I'm gonna focus on um, arm strength. And if you think about it, as far as completing any tasks uh, day to day that require lifting, pushing, and so forth, using the arms, it's gonna be a, a problem or cause some difficulty if we don't have the strength that we used to have when we were younger as we age with respect to arm strength. And uh, we can also uh, break it down further to uh, grip strength but that's a topic for a different day. And so um, arm movements, and we're gonna look at a specific exercise that is going to work the triceps brachii. And when performed correctly, this can provide us with a basis for meeting uh, the demands of daily tasks involving our arms, especially. 
Now for most of this video, I'm going to be off camera so that I can review with you a, a set of slides that I've put together and I've tried to make them as informative for us as possible regarding uh, the triceps and exercising the triceps and understanding motion and movement in the sagittal plane. And we're going to talk about flexion as an, and extension of the arms because that's what goes into uh, the recipe for the right workout of the triceps muscle group. So are you ready? We can get started. Video chat number four is going to deal with working the triceps muscles in the sagittal plane. Now the three planes of motion provide a basic understanding of how the body moves with respect to directionality in three dimensions. The names of these three planes are frontal, transverse, and sagittal. Here's a visual representation of these planes. The frontal, as you can see, separates the front from the back of the human body. The sagittal separates the left from the right, and the transverse plane separates the top from the bottom. Now we have a question. Why is it important for a person interested in fitness and exercise to know about these planes? Well, one answer is that when we strength train, specific exercises require that we move the body in the proper or correct manner so as to realize, for example, full range of motion during the lift or proper adduction or abduction, proper rotation, flexion or extension. The muscles that we target to become strengthened and functional in the exercises as either prime movers or accessory movers go on in daily life to enable us to become more functionally proficient regarding the tasks we perform. A takeaway from this is that specific exercises fit into specific planes of motion. And furthermore, it is a good idea to have a balanced training approach that gets us moving in more than one plane of motion, preferably all three to some degree. This is because most functional movements in daily life are multi-planar. If we analyze most strength training programs, the exercises they contain most often require front to back movements of the arms, the legs, the upper body, the core, and so forth. Some examples include bicep curls, now think concentric as well as eccentric contractions, crunches, and leg extensions. These are occurring in the sagittal plane. On the other hand, raising our arms at the sides of the body, as when performing a dumbbell lateral raise or when performing a cable crossover motion, these take place in the frontal plane. The emphasis is on side movement direction rather than front and back direction. Many viewers are no doubt familiar with jumping jacks. This complex motion, which engages arm, shoulder, glute, leg, and foot joints and muscles, includes in the front, or should say, occurs in the frontal plane. Laterally flexing the spine when we bend and performing lateral lunges are also in the frontal plane of motion. Now for the transverse plane of motion, think of twisting or rotational movements, such as twisting the spine. We can perform internal and external rotation at the following joints, the shoulder, the hip, the ankle, and the wrist. And these movements occur in the transverse plane of motion. And I just realized because I did it, I can also <laughs> perform rotation of my neck. Now back to the sagittal plane. To envision this plane, Imagine you are trapped within a tight, narrow corridor. The only kind of movement that you can engage in is therefore front to back. There is no side to side or lateral motion possible. Now, you could lift your arms, you could extend your arms, you could lift and extend your legs, you can perform a lunge, you can bend your torso at the hip, you can raise up on your toes, you can move your head forward and back as I was just doing, and your shoulders up and down and so forth. I also want to mention that in this position or situation, the body tends to have a great deal of inherent stability in, in the sagittal plane of mo uh, motion. And when training, this translates to being able to lift or move a lot of weight, relatively speaking. 
compared to the other planes. Now, we can state at this point that almost all flexion and extension in the human body happens in the sagittal plane. The exercise that I'm going to focus on next to conclude our video chat is an example of an arm movement in this plane. Now, before we get to the exercise itself, most viewers are familiar with flexing of the arms in order to try to make a muscle like some of us remember Popeye doing when he would eat his spinach. The word flexion is the term that describes the concentric or upward movement of the arm in this sagittal plane, as we call it. When the arm is extended downward in order to straighten it, the motion is eccentric, and this movement is called extension. Thinking what flexion or flexing and extension of the arms looks like, it then becomes easier to visualize flexion and extension of the leg, of the hip, and let's say of the neck. Now it is time to focus on the arms, and in particular, the muscle that is at the back of the arm, the triceps muscle, the triceps brachii. Now here we have a photo of a famous 1940s bodybuilder showing development in this muscle. Notice that the triceps, tri meaning three, is made up of three anatomical heads or parts. Can you spot them there? The lateral head, the long head, and the medial head of the tricep. The lateral head is on the outermost part of the arm and it is active during elbow extension when a resistance is applied, such as when you're moving some weights in the gym. The medial head on the inner part of the arm is most active during forearm extension. And then the long head runs down the back of the arm and is quite different. Unlike the medial or lateral head, it crosses over the sh shoulder joint and attaches to the scapula, assisting in shoulder adduction. And it, this helps with extension at a particular joint where the humerus bone sits. And the triceps is solely responsible for elbow and arm extension. That's what these muscles or heads of muscles are doing. And when the arm is flexed and extended, the triceps can begin working. Anytime the arm adducts, the tricep muscle pulls on the humerus bone in order to keep it in place. And before I go any further, the term abduction is a motion of a structure or a limb away from the body's midline, whereas adduction refers to such motion moving toward the center of the body. The triceps kickback exercise. Now, although the triceps kickback may not be the best exercise, mechanically speaking, I have included it here because I uh, could feel it when I did my old man muscle workout. I could feel it affecting the triceps muscles very distinctly, and I did see good growth. Now, with a proper, slow, controlled technique, you should be able to feel the triceps doing most of the work with this exercise yourselves. And what you want to remember to do is to avoid rocking the shoulder and the elbow. You want to move slowly and in a controlled motion. And when we see the photo on the next slide, notice that the, the arm is not going to have a curl motion to it back up toward the shoulder with your hand. You never get to that. You keep the arm hanging down roughly at 90 degrees and extend the, uh, the arm back by using your triceps muscle, and then bring the arm straight down, but no further than that. Don't bring it up to your shoulder, because then you turn, turn the exercise around into a biceps exercise. So let's look at the photo on the next slide, showing the technique here. Stand with your knees bent slightly, and lean forward a bit with the dumbbell in your left or right hand. And if you lack good stability, you can rest upon a bench, as is shown in the photo, with your free hand. To um, stress yourself a little bit more, or when you're perhaps more advanced in your training, you do this freestyle without leaning, and it, it puts a greater strain on uh, your core, but that's good because it helps build stability. Now, keeping your back straight, notice that's important. Don't hunch your back. Keep it straight. Keep it neutral. 
bend your arm about 90 degrees at the elbow, as we see here, to align your triceps muscle with your back. Notice that they're parallel. Engage your core, squeeze your core, and your triceps. Squeeze the triceps when you fully extend your hand out, your arm, and hinge at the elbow, lifting the dumbbell up and back as you try to straighten your arm behind you. And as I say, squeeze when you get there, when the arm is fully extended behind you. Keep your triceps still and only move your elbow. Don't turn this into a biceps exercise. Guide the weight upward until your arm is straight, pause, and then lower it back to the starting position. Try not to swing your upper body and keep your spine neutral, as we said. And don't use too much of a weight here. If you have too much weight, then you're going to try to uh, help yourself and cheat by swinging with your body. And then that's going to defeat the purpose of the exercise, which is to work your triceps, not the rest of your body. And just for clarity, we have a close-up of the triceps kickback, showing the proper form here. Uh, quickly mention a few other triceps exercises. They're listed here. The triceps dip the overhand cable pushdown, dumbbell neutral grip, skull crusher, and push-ups. Now when we perform the triceps extension or any of these other exercises, we have to breathe properly. We never want to hold our breath as we're doing the exercise because that uh, would create undue strain on the heart. And instead, it's good practice to push out air or breathe out, exhale, as we're pushing the dumbbell toward the back of our body. And then we breathe in as we bring our arm forward. And that's a good cadence for the triceps extension exercise. And we must realize the importance of pace here, not to go fast, go slowly, create the mind-muscle connection, think about what you're doing, squeeze, like I say, the, the triceps muscle at the peak of its contraction as it's all the way with the arm extended. Also, depending on your unique anatomy, the length of your forearms relative your, to your upper arms, for instance, the size and strength of all your arm and upper body muscles, and the mobility at the elbow and shoulder joints, it could be that you may feel you get a better triceps a result or workout with certain of these exercises compared to others and that has certainly been my experience. Now as I prepare to end this video chat I wish to say something about the intensity of our old man muscle strength training exercises triceps uh, kickback included. Remember you control or program the intensity according to the amount of weight uh, per lift that you select and the number of repetitions or reps per set, is it going to be 8, 10, or 12? The number of sets of the particular exercise, are you going to perform this exercise once, two times, or three times? And then the total volume, which is determined by the amount of weight lifted, times the number of reps, times the number of sets. Now beyond this, we need to rest in between each set. And a, a good guide here is that if we're going for moderate intensity, we rest about 30 seconds between each set. If we rest less than that or take practically no rest at all, then the intensity level becomes high. Now, the shorter the rest interval, the greater the t intensity will be, therefore, and the higher the respiration rate and the heart rate. And of course, the shorter your rest interval, the sh sh sooner you'll finish your workout. But for older men, it is best to keep workouts in the moderate intensity range, and it's different than for a younger participant or those training for a competition, but that wouldn't be us. Now, when we're first starting with strength training as older men, we should start off with low intensity, not moderate and certainly not high. Start out low and gradually build up to moderate. Adequate rest and recovery are just as important as the exercise. And a lot of people don't understand that, that if we train and don't get adequate rest, which means between sets during the exercising and adequate recovery, 
which means we have to take at least one day or two days off between workouts. If we fail to do this, all of the training in the world is going to fail us because we'll become overtrained, or what that means is that our muscles are going to be torn apart, torn down, they're going to be sore, we're going to kill our joints, and it's just going to be a bad situation. It'll keep us out of the gym and put us in a bad mood <laughs> regarding working out. So we have to do this right. We have to be smart, and it's not hard. But we train, we rest, we recover. The muscles rebuild, they remodel, and they come back bigger and stronger than ever. And every so often, you want to program into your workout program or routine a week or two off, especially if you're an older man. And this doesn't hurt you, this actually helps you. So people are afraid, well, then I'll lose all of the gains that I made. No, no, thanks to something called muscle memory. You take a week off, let's say, uh, over the Christmas holidays or up to two weeks over that time frame, and then you hit the gym again and you start training, pick up where you left off, you're going to get right back what you had and then some. And this has not... Uh, been disproven. This is actually proven. This is the case with folks who train. So don't worry about that at all. So now for a quick recap and review. The three planes of motion, what are they? Sagittal, frontal, and transverse. Every exercise performed in the gym can be related back to movements that we all do in real life. We all push, pull, flex, extend, squat, lunge, bend, and twist throughout each and every day. The triceps arm muscle, we talked about it, the triceps brachii in detail. It's the muscle that opposes or is the antagonist actually to the biceps arm muscle, which means that when the biceps is flexed, the triceps is at rest. And when the triceps is extending, the biceps is at rest. This is how they work in opposition to each other. Exercising our triceps muscle will increase our arm muscle and arm strength. So it'll allow us to better perform activities of daily life, such as I was doing this earlier today, sweeping, raking leaves, pushing heavy loads. Now on this slide, the question is, why knowing the planes of motion is important? Well, we've kind of talked about this we can understand better how to perform our activities of daily living, our ADLs. As it says, we live in a three-dimensional world. Our bodies need the ability to move in all of these three dimensions. Poor range of motion and joint instability can cause overcompensation, and these alternate movement patterns can lead to chronic pain and injury. But by improving three-dimensional movement, by uh, doing our workouts, in other words, like the triceps extension for the arms, we reduce our risk for injury and are more likely to perform better in our ADLs and then more likely to successfully achieve our fitness goals, but also our life goals. So keep working those triceps. If you work hard, perhaps you will end up with triceps like what we see here with an older, mature Steve Reeves. And good luck with your old man muscle training. So there we have it, my friends. And I trust that the information will prove of some value to you. And what's the bottom line here? The bottom line is that we want to be able to function day in and day out at a level of high functionality as long as we can. And so triceps brachii, what do you remember? Planes of motion, extension, flexion, and so forth. We've covered a lot of ground today, and we will do so again, Lord willing, in the next video chat of the Old Man Muscle video chat series. That's it for today. Thank you for joining me, and take care. Bye-bye, and see you next time.